Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for uh, Thursday, July 27th, 2023 to order. Uh, our first item, as always, is the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to ask everyone to please rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, As always, our meetings are recorded, both audio and video. Uh, we ask, uh, myself included, to silence your cell phones so that we do not interrupt the flow of the meeting. Anybody that wishes to have them, there's masks and hand sanitizer in front of the rooms. And anybody wishing to make a comment, we ask that you please come up to the microphone and speak your comment clearly, as well as stating your name and address for the record. Um, at this time, I will open up the floor for public comments. Don't you want to do the minutes first? Uh, sure. I mean, I can do that. I was going to do that after the public comments. No, we have a few minutes first. Okay. Um, do the wrong agenda. Yeah, I might actually. Hold on. Give me a second. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so before we open up the floor for public comment, thank you, Sue. Uh, the minutes for the June 24th workshop need to be approved. Uh, I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is to approve the minutes of the June 29th, 2023 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Paul Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay, and the minutes for the July 22nd, 2023 workshop have not been completed, so we will table that until next month's meeting. Uh, treasurer's report. Irene, if you have anything that you'd like to bring up. Uh, nothing unusual. Um, we have the final audit from uh, Aikens. Everything went smoothly, and I believe all that information was forwarded to you guys. Uh, and so that has, has been done taken care of. There's just a couple of fine points I need you just to review. And that's about it. Something just to housekeeping stuff for next year, that's all. Okay. I know the previous year they had a couple of recommendations. Yeah. Same, yeah. same sort of format. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, really nothing out of the ordinary. So Okay, very good. Okay. Next item is to approve the payment of the bills for July. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Bye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Now, for real this time, yes. uh, I'll open up the floor for public comments. Once again, just to reiterate, if you have a comment, please come up to the microphone and clearly state your name, address, and your comment for the record. Hey, I have a friend, you know, 55 me, I clerk. Okay. My first question is, why do we even need a drone here? And how much that cost at the, the township? That was what, 500 bucks? No, it's about $1,500. Okay. The drone was purchased for aerial surveying around uh, disasters, like if we have flooding. That way, we are able to take the requisite pictures and documentation of damage to be able to get grants and uh, funding for people that have the damages, as well as to assist when we have situations where somebody goes missing. But don't we have somebody to go around and, and do this kind of work? No, we had, when we had the person that walked off from the American house, we had to wait for quite a while for it to come in from out of the area. We are actually now one of the, the only places in the area that has one of those things to be able to respond to emergencies like that. So besides the problem, how much other stuff that we are paying for out of the country? Uh, that's a pretty broad question, Al. Um, what well, we haven't really bought much other things other than we've bought some road signs, we bought cold patch, um, we bought some uh, we bought some things for the road crew for safety yeah. things, like there's little lights that you can put down when you're doing road work after dark if there's an emergency or a down wire, things like that. Um, it's all been, with the exception of that, which was built into the EMC budget for, for things that we need for emergency response, we really actually haven't bought all that much this year. <clears throat> Okay, burning. What, what what can we do about this burning here? I mean, sometimes the stuff it stinks so bad and makes so much smoke and just goes to 
far end of town is full of smoke. So there is actually a burning ordinance, and there's a couple of things that are by default unlawful at the level of the state of Pennsylvania. Um, specifically, you're not allowed to open burn in PA. A lot of people do it. But it would just stop all together. Only the outside of the, the township. I mean, the gas side of the town. I mean, we'd have to amend the burning ordinance, right, but there's, somebody, yeah. Because it's apparently it's the it's ordinance that's there now, yeah. Yeah. it well, doesn't mean nothing. The problem with any ordinance is enforcement. So whether we, I think we fundamentally have some problems that we need to address with the burning ordinance because of the damage. But if you see or smell, in some cases, people burning illegally, if somebody's burning garbage, like plastic bottles and tires and whatever, call the township call the police will send somebody out or they'll send somebody out to, to action it. It'd be no different than if somebody was doing something unsafe and you had to call the police. I don't want to sit outside and smell and breathe this smoke in all the time. Yeah. I can't even go outside sometimes. No, I, I agree with you. I told the, the next door neighbor, I say, hey, what the hell are you burning over there? I say, you have all that smoke in town here on the street and then back towards my bird cages. Mm. Yeah, no, I, again, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I wouldn't want to have my next. So we got to work on something to eliminate the burning in town here. Okay, we'll take that yeah. into advisement when we look at the burning ordinance. So uh, I'm not talking about the farmers. They're out there. It don't affect anybody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's again, when we look at the burning ordinance. Yeah, uh, yeah. When we look at the burning ordinance, we'll build that in. Because I, I think if people are obviously going to do things like grill or have a small little fire for making s'mores and things like that, but there's a far cry between that and somebody burning a whole bunch of like yard debris and, <laughs> oh. like I said, like plastic bottles and things like that. Fireworks. Yeah. Why they got to have fireworks in town? We have a, one big ass field up here. They, they can come up here and have the fireworks up here without worrying about Older people that can't take the noise, that bang and boom and stuff like that. Well, the, here. yeah, say so it's it's technically legal until 10 p.m. because of the noise ordinance. There are other things about fireworks that are inherently legal, illegal in the state of Pennsylvania, which Colin, you may want to opine on. But um, the way sound carries around here, Al, even if they went over to the playground, you'd, you'd still hear it. <laughs> Huh? Even if they came over here to the playground, you'd you'd still hear it. Oh, you can stay here, but I mean, it's right across the street from me. They yeah. were banging away until so they run out of money. Until, until they run out of uh, again, money. much like with anything else, if there's a noise problem, if you call the police, they so will send a letter to people out. They want to have the fireworks in town, fine, but they come up here. We we, we can't do that. Why not? So they're they're allowed to set they're fireworks off. Change it. State, state, they change everything state, else. state law preempts the township from totally banning fireworks yeah. in the jurisdiction. But they have it in town here that it now, could burn the house down. If, if, if the fireworks are set off within a certain distance of a structure, that is a, that is a violation. Yeah, and, and not to mention and, there's and fireworks the that are... And the, and the police can cite yeah. someone that under state law. I'm sure so if, if they're setting off illegal fireworks too. By very definition. And have her up here instead of having her in town. You, you can't specify where people can set off fireworks. Huh? You cannot specify where people can set off fireworks. One of the only regulations you can have as a township is like, how far can they be set off from structure that's occupied. This year, a big fireworks that it was well, on this year. Al, some, of those, some of those may, by definition, be illegal fireworks. They may not even be legal in the state of PA. So whether we, we have a statute or an ordinance for it, it would be... Amazing. Next time to have my call you. Well, call the police, Al. Don't call me. Well, the only thing I'm going to do is turn around and call the police. You guys are in charge here, not the... Not no, the it's a violation. Yeah, Al, you if, you're, no if you're getting held up at gunpoint on Main Street, please don't call me. Call the police. Same thing with the fireworks. If there's somebody sitting on fireworks... If I like get held up at gunpoint, the son of a bitch better shoot because I'm going to knock him down. Okay. My my point remains valid. All they got to do, all they got to do is bring the body bag. Call, call the right person for the job, Al. That's my point. And for okay. this particular thing, it's it's our friends, the Culpa Hawken boys. Now let's talk about the trash. Oh yeah, the trash. I got so many phone calls from people. So that's, I have that's, that is an agenda. It's, item. it's an agenda item, Al. That that's a a, a big issue, and we're going to talk. I mean, about they, they call me. I have nothing to do with it. Why are they calling you? I have. <laughs> Why are they calling you? Yeah. Huh? Why, Why are they, they calling, calling you, Al? I don't know. I'll tell them you're calling you. Yeah. Okay. So whatever happened after that, you know, I don't, I don't want to hear the bullshit. 
Yeah. Well, for what it's worth, we don't either, but it's it's a much bigger problem. And you know, they want to talk about uh, recycle. Yeah. They come over with truck and and dump both of them in there. Yeah. So why should I recycle when they put them all in the trash bin? So still, please continue to recycle. So whether they're collecting it all at once and splitting it up later, that's their prerogative. We we get a report of how much tonnage of recycling they've collected. So unless they're completely completely falsifying that they are doing something to get the recycling out so please don't just stop recycling um beyond that this is one of many concerns and complaints that have been lodged by not just the people in marion township but a lot of other customers for eagle and again we're going to talk about that at length when we get to that agenda and i've thought want to talk about donation okay making all you know we don't have money to fix the roads but we have money to donate to different organizations. The donations that we make every year are extremely, yeah, and say it's less than $1,500, and it's the things that we value within no, the community. It, it was here, the, when, the last time I was here, you used to, yeah, you weren't here, you used to approve the donation of $2,500 to, to the police department. That was last year. But we got to stop that. So you make a donation to, to the fire the company and women's stores. So, so you don't want to support the police. We did not make a twenty five hundred dollar donation to the women's store. Twenty five hundred dollar donation was made to the police departments. It was twenty five hundred because I remember that clear as a day to the police departments. And, and yeah. if memory yes. serves me, that was yes. because they had a specific need There's around equipment and they asked for assistance. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. They can get it from the state. Uh, Al, they can't get it from the state any easier than no, we can I get mean, money from the state. they can get it from the state. Uh, I'm saying it's they're, they're not going to have any easier time getting money from the state than we are. This donation bullshit has got to stop. So we have some money here to fix the roads. Again, $2,500, just to reiterate. That's So I don't know how many other program. donations was made that but wasn't you, brought back to me. To be able to respond to this, so, so I'd rather give him the 25 yeah, because I mean, in the grand. No, no. Okay. Yeah, hey, hold on. Yeah. Audience cannot so, be heard on their recording. Yeah, just just to address that particular statement, it was it was not about wages. It was not about giving any of the officers a pay raise. One of the things that they had asked for specifically was they needed to replace one of the computers that was in the squad car, which we still have. Which we still have yeah. it. It's it's in the process of getting the other out. half from one of the other municipalities. And it's we're still trying to get to the yeah. grants. And so in, in, what in what first, I'm, yes. What I'm saying is this: we spending too much money for no reason here. Really? Oh, I I wouldn't oh, call okay. necessarily police about, services no reason now. Huh? But we, I wouldn't call. Police services, no reason, but please continue. Let's talk about the, the sewer project yeah. the agenda. Okay. The lawyer sent the, 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 the plan in to DEP mm -hmm. and no problem doing it. Why couldn't they bring that plan back? What kind, what kind of lawyer we have here? With the way the law works, and again, I, I don't want to hash this too much right now. Once the plan is sent in and approved by DEP, that changes the dynamic of what we can and cannot do with the plan. Namely, once it's approved, we cannot pull it back. If we pull it back, they will, and they have said they will, start fining us a minimum of $300 a day. I don't care if flights. it's going to be $1,000 a day. We got to get that back. But that's, out. That's that works out to rough math. That's over $100,000 a year in fines. And not to mention, at some point, they, they are, they are going to get swirly, and they're just going to come in and do it. The people can't afford that kind of money. Al, you, you, uh, again, Al. Al, we're giving you almost 15 I don't care how much no, I'm no, up no, here. You're going to hear what I got to say. We've given you 15 minutes. We've had a reasonable chance. So, I am doing it. Well, you've had your time. So for the last four or five months, I wasn't here. So you take that time. The board will not be answering any more questions. Yeah, Al, I'll cover your Act 537. Well, that's a... Good I'll, cover up. Go ahead. I'll cover your Act 537 on the agenda item. That's the, literally the first agenda item. Okay. So we got to take the DP to, to court? No. I go around town here. I'll make the people should make sure. Al, we'll, we'll cover that in that. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments? Dan. 
Incline 14 Rose Bridge Court, Stone Crawl Village. I defer to item number nine when you get to that subject. And okay. I'd like to speak. Certainly. Okay, do we have any other public comments? Yeah. I'm playing uh, 22 Toby View Drive. Uh, I don't know, there, there just seems like there's been a lot of uh, un unrest reasonably in uh, th that little area of the, the township. Uh, and, and yes, I wanted to mention the trash, uh, but there, there seems to be a lot of confusion. I'm, I'm hearing things second and third hand. I'd, I'd just like to try and get some clarification on what we are allowed to do, what we're not allowed to do on our property as far as uh, like if you want to extend extend uh, parking or something I'm, I'm hearing one number from the county i'm hearing a different number from the township uh, I'm, I'm hearing uh, something completely different from somebody i talked to on the planning commission so i think there's a lot of confusion out there as to like what we're allowed to do and not allowed to do and I've tried to read what was posted online and I can't really decipher it clearly. Okay, so uh, it, it, do you wanna get them all out at once or do you wanna kind of do them one at a time? Well, that's that's yeah. one topic. Okay. Uh, circling back to this drone thing, I too have had the drone uh, has flown over my house. Nope. Uh, I know it was up in the air on June the 10th nope. and flew over a birthday party in the neighborhood. Nope. And I know the police were called uh, later that night. Uh, and why not? And I'm just, I, I mean, I, per I completely understand the reason for having a drone for emergencies, but I just was having a hard time understanding what an emergency was. Yeah. No, un understood. So uh, I don't offhand know when the drone was out necessarily. The only time I, I really see that immediately is if there is an emergency like we have flooding yeah. or something like that i get engaged um irene since you oh, interact with john just, wait, regularly wait, i'll let you the maybe the, the, yeah, yeah. The it's an easy answer it was never over anyone else's but mine you went up you went up to the maximum flight of 400 feet and came down and circled over our property all drones have a black box in it just like airplanes do which uh tell about its flight pattern we provided all that information to the Tulpa Hawken police. That's not something that could be tampered with. Joan went up because we were all sitting in our backyard. Um, it went back towards, back into my property, just for everyone's uh, knowledge, I live across the street from this gentleman, and that's it. It never left my property. We do have seven acres. So if anyone wants to make an inquiry about the drone, it has a black box, just like airplanes do. So the flight pattern is there for anyone to inquire. You just need a computer and whatever. Well, is, specifically, if yeah. you want to submit a right to know, literally right. anything right. you'd ever right. want to know, exactly. if you submit a right to know request, we will be right. happy to provide. So, so, so that that's part one to that. John never flies over anyone else's property unless there's a search and rescue going on, which there hasn't been. I think there may have been mm -hmm. like a fire or something that he used it for. The other part of it, as an FAA uh, licensed operator, you have to have a certain amount of time. So he has to essentially practice with that drone. He has to log time that has to be submitted to whatever agency license you, licenses you to have that drone. John is very on top of the laws and know exactly where and where he can't fly and under what circumstances. So he has to do it routinely. So that's why you see it pop up, but it's only over my house. It might go over my mom's house, which is right next to her because we have permission from her and that's it. But typically he sticks to our yard, essentially in the area right behind the house. He doesn't go anyplace else. And we provided all the information to the Tulpa Hawking Police because of that complaint with the flight pattern that the drone itself provides. There's no way to tamper with it unless you want to take apart the drone and he won't do that, so. Okay. Uh, and then just a couple of quick observations. Uh, like, like Sheridan Road from William Penn out to the Lebanon County line is absolutely terrible. I mean, I've had the alignment done on my wife's car. That's the way she goes to work. I've had it done three times in three years. So, you know, and 
I, I know I've talked to, um, I believe, your husband in the past about, uh, I, I don't notice it so much coming in the other end of Sheridan Road to William Penn where the new bridge is because I have a truck and I sit much higher. But if I'm in my daughter's car or my son's car, you can't see if traffic is coming yeah. to the left because mm -hmm. the vegetation is overgrown. Yeah. And it makes for a dangerous driving situation. Someone's flying down that hill and someone's going to get killed there. So every year, I'll, I'll do this one first and we'll work backwards. That is actually state. We usually end up cutting it anyway, but we, we request the state to come out and cut it because it, it's, it's a state road. It'd be no different if we went out on 422 and started cutting down vegetation. Um, depending on how fast they do it, Sometimes we don't have to, but typically we have to send Butch out or somebody out with uh, a clippers and a saw to take care of it because of the visibility concerns. I've so several times yeah, if it if it's getting bad, this it's, point because yeah. some of us may or may yeah. not drive that way routinely. If it's getting to the point where visibility is impaired, if you let Sue know, chances are Sue will probably call me. I'll take a ride over there. I'm like a hop, skip, and a jump away. I'll take a look at it and I'll tell Butch to come out with a saw. Um, but Again, we put the calls in like clockwork every year to, to PennDOT, and if they don't do it, if we don't see it, somebody's got to let us know, then we'll take care of it. No one's answering. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm not wholly yeah. surprised. But bottom line is, yeah. just to, to reiterate an underlying point, we can't be everywhere all at once. So if there is something like that that you see, if you call the township, it'll hit our radar and we'll make sure that we take care of it. Okay. Um, going backwards to Sheridan Road, uh, Sheridan Road is kind of the bane of my existence. I fully understand that it, it will take fillings out of your mouth. The problem with Sheridan Road is it's actually not only one problem. It's graded the wrong direction. It's got tree cover on both sides of the road. And it's probably got no base under it, based on my understanding of a lot of the roads in the area. So to remediate that, we're looking at a couple of years ago, pricing here, but it's about $500,000 per mile to completely redo a road like that. Yeah, I, I don't know what, what they've done or haven't done, but yeah. Well, I'm just giving you that as a, a general price point. It's, it's, it's extremely expensive, which is why, regrettably, it hasn't been done. We've done things like put uh, the, the, excuse me, the cold patch, the, the cold patch down on it. Um, simply because we have other things like the culverts that have failed that we've had to divert resources to addressing. I would love to do Sheridan Road. It's terrible. I know it's terrible. It's probably the worst road in the township. The problem is we just don't have the resources to do all of those things all at once. We need to put that in the budget, though, for next year. We need, we need to try to it. figure out how to fit it in the budget, because like I said, well, that's... There's, there's, one way to, there's one way to fund it. We got to raise the taxes we have to raise but, that road is dangerous I but agree. jim to to raise the taxes that are because that, that was what i figured out last year we would have to go up to like 20 mils and that's completely unsustainable not to, not to do share not to do share the road hold on yeah yeah so the short answer grants yeah uh if you if you if you have a comment please come up but the, the short, short answer, answer on that is the grants. The short we can't answer do it is grants, grants, but we're not getting it. Yeah, and, but his thing is the about The road continues to get worse, and the road, all of our roads are getting worse, yeah. obviously. Yeah, I, I hear you. That in that road in particular is, is off. Yeah. I agree. The, the only I drive thing, that road off. The, the only thing we can do. So, so Jim, let's, let's consider this for budget time. This is what I will say. I agree. Let's look at it, and let's see how much we'd be able to do from a capital expenditure standpoint in taking out a loan to pay for it. That's the only way that we're going to be able to organically finance doing that. Well, then that's what we need. Then we need to look at that if that's the case. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, liquid. We, we do, yeah. but I, I would pretty much do all of it, I think. So let's let's start by talking to Charlie. Let's yeah, see there's, there should be some liquid fuels money because we couldn't use it. Well, there, there is, but let's... The, the, the main problem, the reason that Sheridan is such a tough metal track is because of the trees on both sides of the road. So we're going to have to do an extensive amount of earthwork on that, in addition to the road being torn up and repaved, regraded, the whole, the whole nine yards. This is, this is basically we're taking everything out. It's not even an FDR. It's beyond an FDR. It is, you'd have an easier time putting a road in new. Well, then close it. 
If you can't, you can't fix it, it then it's closed. But we can get a plan, get an idea of what it's going to cost. Yeah, I think let's. We've been planning. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How many guys, years? Guys, guys. we're always planning. But there's Jim, no money. Well, the plan seems to be let's just ignore it and go away. This is going away. So we either we raise some taxes on the next year, we, we get a loan, or you close the damn. Well, let's pick one of three. Jim, before we before we get too hot under the collar, let's agree that we'll reach out to Charlie between now and the next meeting. We'll talk to Charlie, have him look at the projects, tell us what we're looking at, and we'll see if it's something that we can fit into the, the budget using liquid fuels. We'll see if it's something we can fit in using a, a note of some variety for financing the project out, or see if it's astronomically terrifying and it's something that we, we go, oh, crap, and then can't figure out for 2024. Okay, I'm writing this down. We're expecting a report from Charlie. Okay. In August. Yeah, just reach out to Charlie. Yeah, we just we gotta contact Charlie and make sure that yeah. he's on board with it. Oh, okay. I'm not in charge of Rose. I don't know who you'll even talk to. Me. That's okay. Yeah, he'll talk to you. Can we move yeah. yeah. on? Yeah. So yeah. So so yeah. Sheridan. Yeah. Um and then the other thing was what you can and cannot do on the property. Well um yeah, yeah. I was I was just very confused by the by some of the definitions. Uh, they now classify stone as an impermeable surface. Like, yeah. like since when? We've been it's, using stone in drain fields for hundreds of years. I, I must have I, missed that I, day in science class. I don't know the background on it. However, the bit that I've been involved with this in the purposes of... And, okay, Chuck well, Chuck, Chuck, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Marion Township stormwater order of Bible Branch is rather confusing for somebody to pick it up and try and understand what it means. So in a quick synopsis, anytime you add over 500 square feet of impervious or semi-impervious cover on a property, stormwater management needs to be addressed. It can be addressed in one of two ways right now, depending on the size of the property and the amount of existing and proposed impervious cover, you are allowed to qualify for an exemption from rate control. What does that mean? That means you still have to address stormwater management, but you do not have to have a facility size to handle up to and including a 100-year storm event. It's a much smaller facility designed to accommodate basically a two-year storm event. So it's doing a little something. An exemption of rate control. Rate control. That includes addressing rate control and a number of other criteria dealing with stormwater. All these regulations get pushed down to municipalities from the Department of Environmental Protection here in Pennsylvania and sometimes all the way from the federal level of the Environmental Protection Agency. These are not standards or regulations that Marion Township dreamed up on their own. They are based on model ordinances that the County of Berks puts together in conjunction with the Pennsylvania DEP. The townships are allowed to tweak those ordinances to some degree regarding construction standards and, and the like, but the regulations are the regulations. Now, if you're here tonight because I believe your neighbor wanted to put in a driveway expansion, and he started the work, had, I believe, the stone in for the drive to expand it. It was about 1,700 square feet of impervious cover, or semi-impervious cover, as stone is considered. But he also took the topsoil from that driveway and filled in some wetlands on his property. And then I think somehow the Berks County Conservation District came out and were enforcing Pennsylvania's Title Chapter 105 rules and regulations regarding uh, impacts to environmentally sensitive areas, which is what wetlands is considered. I think he has since corrected that filling operation and restored the wetlands. Then the issue became he needed a zoning permit to expand the driveway. And when he was informed of the requirements to address stormwater management, he voluntarily chose to remove the driveway, the stone that he had put in, and we have to consider it because once it's stoned five years from now, somebody will pave it. 
So that's pretty much the crux of the stormwater management requirements here in Marion Township. Yeah, just just to add to that, it's it's not the most approachable thing. That's I think everybody short of an engineer can agree on that. And even the engineer can probably agree on that. I agree. On that. Um, I know anytime I've done projects like that, I've actually I've called the office or I've gotten connected to Craft Codes, who's the the zoning enforcement officer, and I've I've actually asked them, hey, this is the project that I'm looking to do. What do I need to do? They're usually extremely helpful. And if you say like, oh, I'm going to enlarge my driveway by X number of square feet, or I'm putting in a shed or whatever, they'll be able to tell you exactly what you need to submit to make sure that it's okay. Okay. I, the, the confusion was like when I drew permits, when I put my shed up, hmm? you know, I had stone brought in. I How big of an area? Number one. Well, he had a shed permit too. That would have been part of the shed permit. Yeah, it would have been part of the shed permit. Right. So if it was under 500 square feet, you might not have had to, to have done stormwater. It, it was under 500 square feet. Yeah. There okay. You go. Uh, I just, I wasn't following. I'm, I'm trying to look this up on my computer. I'm mm -hmm. trying to jump from the county to the township. It wasn't making a whole lot of sense. I don't, what, what standards would you be looking at the county? I don't. County Conservation District or Berks County? I guess the county said you need, you don't need any of this stuff until you go greater than 5,000 square feet. That's for an erosion and sedimentation control plan. That's for earth disturbance activity. That's not for impervious cover. You're looking at the Berks County Conservation District regulations. Yeah, there's, they there's, are mandated by Pennsylvania Chapter 102 regarding I said, I, I, said I was control. confused. Yeah, but no, and yeah. it's, 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 it's now. I'm confused too. Yeah, I, if I were in your shoes, I would have been confused too. But, and every project's uh, different because I'm just glossing over it. There are other factors that can and can weigh in on whether stormwater needs to be addressed. In particular, if there's a, a known drainage problem in the area or related to the property in some way, shape, or form. Stormwater right. is not easy anymore. 20 years ago, life was good. Not anymore. It's regulated. And it's unfortunate. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Slipping out? Okay. Okay. Seeing no other public comments at this time, we'll move into the main items for the, the agenda. The first one is the Act 537. Uh, since this came up in public comments, I would like to reiterate kind of the ins and outs on this. I feel it's important to, to do that based on the, the statement. When a plan gets submitted to the DEP and the DEP accepts it, that changes the legal dynamic of what we as a municipality can and cannot do with that plan because it's no longer a draft plan. It is an accepted approved plan. If you try to back out on that, you are in essentially non-compliance to what you have agreed with the state to do. We, we technically put it in, even though it was the old board members, the DEP accepted. It has become a codified thing that we have to comply with if we do not do that they find the crap out of us you need to come up to yeah the come microphone up come up to the mic Al. sorry so when what do you mean who's responsible for that yeah who's responsible for putting it into the dp there was uh the other two supervisors at the time it was well, they pay the for it because, because it, it doesn't how it doesn't pay. work that way people are, <laughs> if i have to i get the lawyer back here so al what what we are doing as a board is we are trying to comply with the legal requirements that we have to. But I, I want to put words in everybody else's mouth. But it is a big, very expensive project, and you better believe I am not going to sign off on that if we can't get enough grants. If it is a, a an overly large burden, if it's completely unaffordable, we're we're not going to do it. We're we'll have no other choice but to lawyer up and and go that route. We don't want to turn the town into a ghost town one way or the other, whether it's with sewer or without public sewer. But what we do have to be mindful of is the legal responsibilities that the municipality has to make sure that we aren't fined like $100,000 every year by the state. Or if the state gets tired of having to fine us, coming in and just putting the sewer in and giving us no grant money and then stiffing us with a $6 million bill. We have to navigate the unfortunately crappy situation that we're in because... We didn't get a chance to amend the plan. We didn't get a chance to have that discourse with the current board and DEP around what we consider to be a sustainable 
uh, project or a feasible project. To be blunt, we have to work with the hand that we're dealt. And it's it's crap, but it is what it is. So does that help paint a little bit more of a picture for you, Al? There's a little daylight there, but not enough. Okay. I mean, I don't, don't know what else more to tell you. Okay. Okay. Well, specifically about the Act 537, uh, Joe Baldas from Hydroterra Professionals is working on the draft milestone uh, schedule and special study. They did begin doing geotech soil borings starting on the 18th. Uh, Hydroterra Professionals was appointed as the alternate SEO and the managers of the sewer management program. Uh, the WSA agreement is still being drafted, and uh, we'll be looking at amending the ordinance, as we discussed at the workshop, to include the ability to have uh, private haulers do the inspections. Um, I'd imagine we will be... That's Magenta. Oh, it's Magenta. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I lost over that one. Um, in addition to that, we did get a little bit of a, a feedback from uh, Hydroterra about the boring. I don't, is it an agenda item, too? Before, yes. I, before I put my phone on. But the amendment. Yeah. Amendment yeah. So with the, the boring, when I talked to Joe, they found a lot of bedrock starting at about four feet, which means a traditional gravity sewer is out of the question. Because your only way to deal with that is you either hire somebody with a, an excavator to chip at it, and that's a, a huge amount of labor, or you use dynamite. So more and more, the argument is building itself for if we have to do this, the only path is the low pressure system. Like there is no other way to do this because of the soil composition. So there will be a full report that we'll get about the soil boring, but that's pretty much the deciding factor on that. Uh, going on to the next item, which is kind of a dovetail on this, this is the LSA category four program. It's a, a Burks grant. The deadline for submittal is September 30th. The projects must include the community's quality of life assessment. Uh, infrastructure planning, design, and construction uh, are all eligible for the project. There is no match required. The fund maximum is undetermined. It's, it's always lovely when that's an open-ended. Uh, and we need to notify Barry Joswiak and Senator Chris Gebhardt. The Stipulations on that, I uh, believe much like that, and the statewide program, which is the next agenda item, is we need to be decisive in what our project is. We can't just say we're putting in a sewer. Um, based on the soil boring, I'm of the mind that we tell Hydroterra to pr proceed with uh, putting in the grant request based on it being a low pressure system. Do you both mm -hmm. agree with that? I heard an affirmative yeah. from Jim. Yeah. Okay. So... The, I'd like to make a motion to authorize Hydroterra to prepare and submit the LSA Category 4 program grant using the low pressure sewer design. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. And Colin, if you, if you have to interrupt me at any time, please don't, don't hesitate to interrupt me. <laughs> I saw you look down. I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything. My, my only question is whether we can make that representation so there is actually a consideration in the plan. One of the alternate things that yes. was not well fleshed out, but was mentioned was a low pressure system. Okay. So it's not like it's a completely alien concept. Okay. It is in okay. there, but the okay. amendment with the milestones would basically take the information that we have from the soil boring. We met with the DEP a couple of weeks, or it's actually probably like a month or so ago. Yeah. Um, and it kind of turns that and says, based on, uh, surveying, this is the this is the new design. We need to switch it, and the DEP and was entirely for it. Special study, yeah, and the special yeah, study. Yeah, they're, they're very open to allowing us to do that. Yeah, yeah. So we'll work with them, even if we have to provide potentially like minutes from the DEP meeting or you know soil soil boring. There is enough uh, artifact based items there that we should be able to, to prove that it's that we're not shooting from the hip here. This is actually a legitimate request based on what we have in the plan. Okay. Likewise, the 2023 LSA statewide program, PA grant, it has a, a deadline for submittal for November 30th of this year. 
uh, much like the category four needs to have the community quality of life assessment, infrastructure planning, design, and construction are all part of the uh, eligible cost for the project. There is no match required. Um, the fund maximum on this one is a million dollars. So we might be able to get a, a decent piece of this, uh, if, even if it's at the early stages of this paid for entirely. Uh, we would just need to notify the uh, PA represent Barry, representative Barry Joswiak and Senator Chris Gebhardt about this. Um, I'm of the mind that we authorize Hydroterra to move on this early, get it in as quick as we can, just submit both of them at the same time. So I'll make a motion to authorize Hydroterra to prepare and submit the LSA statewide program grant, again, using the low pressure sewer design. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Next is the sewer management program ordinance amendment and revision. Uh, we need to amend the ordinance to reflect the change in the septic tank inspections. Um, we discussed previously, as I mentioned before, having the pumpers register with the township to complete the uh, required paperwork on Hydro Terrace Terra Tracker app. Um, we'll need to notify pumpers and property owners of the change. I think step one is we draft the change in the ordinance and then send out letters, uh, both to pumpers and honestly to residents, send out a letter saying there's been a change. This is what to expect. This is what to do. And uh, in the next couple of years, we should hopefully see the, the program cost reduce as a result based on uh, the fact that everybody kind of gets into the swing of it and the fact that it, it is going to be automated that point so during the workshop meeting we had talked about sending out a newsletter so we'd include yeah, that in there perfect mm -hmm. and so melissa's been updating our website routinely mm -hmm. information so if there's something that we could put on the website it would be useful too yep and i need some direction on what to tell people i'm getting calls from people who are due to get their septic tanks inspected by the end of this year and i don't know if this procedure is going to be how fast would we be able to get the, the, the drafts of the revised ordinance? Is that something to get out for next month? Yeah, I, I talked to uh, Joe from Hydro today, yeah. and he was actively working on okay. the amendments to the ordinance for my review. Okay. Um, if we can get it like done for next month, we could have people doing that for like and October, November, like, December. Sure they can hold all yeah. Months, yeah. Two, three months. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, just want to let you know. Yeah, because you know, this is what that calls I'm getting. Yeah, unfortunately, in in this sort of interim period, until the change actually happens, it's it's still it has to stay business as usual. Mm -hmm. If they need to have it inspected, they need to call, and we need to have. Um, in this case, it would be uh, system design and engineering go out because they're the primary SEO rather than Alan Madera and Bergson Biotech. Yes, sir. <laughs> You want to talk you? I want to know why did we come about this? Why did why are y'all inspecting our stuff and charging us? Hold on. And my second question is, I want to go back to kind of what Mike said about housing. Mm -hmm. About four years ago, I had a car. It was for my son. It was under a tarp. Tarped up, perfect. I don't have nothing on my my house. My house is flowers and everything. Mm -hmm. All right. Had a guy come out from the whoever and say, if you don't fix that or get rid of it, we're going to charge you. But when you go up to the top of my hill, take a right, go towards Marion, and you look five houses down, what do you see? Yeah. Somebody's inside yeah. living on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. So please tell me that you're going to find me for a tarped car when this guy has been living since I've been here eight years now when I had my house built his inside is out on his lawn but you're going to find me so let me let me let me address since your car was tarped you it's, should not yeah have been you, you, sh you should not you had to do anything I actually was on the board at the time that we passed the IPMC if your car is covered or tarped or is like fenced in and it's obscured as long as it's safely contained you're good. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I don't want to get in nobody's business. That's his business. Yeah. He wanted to live like that. That's on well, him. He's he's actively being enforced against. So, okay. so. Yeah. so if it's actively being, so how come is it taking eight years? The, the court the court process is aimed. Like I said, I don't want to get in nobody's yeah. business. That's his yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. When it, 
Yeah. She's probably called the district justice office tomorrow and ask her why she's continued that case many, many times. And okay. Finally, yeah. last and month, they were fined $2,000. Yeah. So, Holly, you want to But it was supposed to be done by July 21st, cleaned up, and it hasn't been. So, so I instructed yeah. Colin tonight to go after him again. And this time, I'd like to see $3,000 plus costs. Yeah. Sure. So, I want to use more in well, business, but when it comes into my town and yeah. my, my part of living, so, Colin, then we got an issue. So with, with the car, because I actually, I have a car that was in my garage, but I had to put stuff in my garage, so it's out right now, and I have it covered. That's, it actually, I think I have to put the cover back on because it blew off, but point remains, you are allowed to have a vehicle that's not registered, not inspected, like a parts car or project car, or yeah. like if you're using it for racing or whatever, um, as long as it's covered, it meets the ordinance. It's fine. And we actually structurally built that into the ordinance because we know there are a lot of people that have project car or a car they bought for their kids or just something that they're working on or whatever. It's a fact of life in our community. If you don't that. Thanks. You shouldn't have gotten that. The other, the other statement that you have that I feel is important to, to mention, the pump outs. Yeah. That's not a decision we made. That is actually state law. Not okay. everywhere it applies with that, but when you're under the lens of the DEP grilling you, they make sure that you're complying with all of their laws. And one of the things that is on the laws across the state of Pennsylvania is if you have an on-lot system, whether it's a septic tank or a holding tank or a sand mount, it must be inspected at regular intervals. And the intervals vary based on the type of system, but it must be inspected. And the only equitable way to do that is everybody that has one of these systems pays in so that when their time comes every three, four years, it's already effectively paid for. You don't have something that is hitting you with a $200 bill or something like that for the, the cost of having somebody come out and assess your system when it's pumped. Okay. So that's that's the, the logic behind it. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Quick thing. Yep. Lights around in Topi View. We have kids everywhere. You know, I mean, soon as the light, a little bit of light goes down, it's black. It's completely black out there. We really need to think about because if you're coming down, yeah. somebody's walking. It, it's 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 dark on the side. Are there, are there not streets outside? And I've got three kids that live next to me. Yeah. And they're they're all around this neighborhood because they're they're young kids. Yeah. It, and they've been taught well to be outside and roll. You know. But we need some lights. We need something. Take a look at it. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Colin, I, I cut you off there. I'm sorry. I can opine on the situation at 1127. Uh, yeah, please, please do. Give us, give us an update. Yeah, I'm sure it's an agenda item, but please, let's... let's... No, it's not. Oh, it's yet. not? Okay, so, well, even better. The audience may already know this, but when someone violates the zoning ordinance or the property maintenance code or a building code, there are two ways to enforce those regulations against the violator. You either file a citation in court in, in the district court for fines and costs. You go to the local magistrate and you base and she basically hears the case. Okay. In almost every situation, the township or the borough takes that route first because it's not as significant. Now, the theory is that the fines and costs are supposed to deter the violator from doing that conduct in the future. And if I can interject one thing, one of the reasons that we go that route, and there's a lot of lead up to that route, is we don't want to actually find anybody. Like we want to just, if there is a problem, send somebody a letter, they're given 30 or 60 or 90 days to remediate it, and everything's right with the world. And when you don't have somebody that complies with it and cleans up the, 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 the inside of their house that's on the outside, as you put it, then that happens. Sure. Typically, the district justices are hesitant to find anyone and are pretty liberal when it comes to treating these matters. So they will give people 60 days, 90 days, 120 days to fully rectify the alleged violation. Now, if that doesn't happen, ultimately, the person gets a fine and everyone hopes that it deters the violator from engaging in that conduct again. When that doesn't happen, the really only other option to enforce the code is to get an injunction from the Court of Common Pleas. And, and so to the extent that this issue continues to persist at the property we know but are not mentioning by name, 
uh, I've advised the board at this point that we should really go to court and uh, try to seek what's called a permanent mandatory injunction. And what that does is essentially uh, a trial court judge um, will order that person to rectify the code issue or be held in contempt. So that is the direction that we are heading if I talk to the code enforcement officer at Kraft and he tells me that the property is still not clean to code. Yeah, and just, just to highlight that, to go back, we don't wanna to have to get to that point with anybody to the point where Yes, I'll use do. that particular, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe, in may, yeah, in this instance, maybe we do, but as, as a generality, when Kraft issues one of those letters, if it's a, a particularly large thing, um, they'll actually, as long as they see you making progress, they'll work with you. They'll give you more time. So if it's a particularly big, big thing and they say, okay, you didn't get all of it done, but we can see that you're making your, uh, an actual God's honest effort. We're going to give you more time before we go the route of the, the district justice uh, of enforcement. And again, this, this, like anything else we do, is not meant to be a burden. It's not meant to beat people over the head. It's meant to be an item in the municipal toolbox to make sure that everybody's quality of life is good, that we don't have somebody who has a, a junkyard okay. on their property next to your house that's breeding rats or is a, a danger to kids because they're going to fall on it and get tetanus. Um, all of that stuff is meant to be there to protect everybody else. And unfortunately, sometimes the, the, the blade swings the other direction and you find yourself going, oh crap, I forgot to do whatever and now I got a letter. But the bottom line is we wanna work with you. We wanna make sure that the professional services that we have doing things like zoning and codes and engineering and everything else are there for everybody's betterment, not as a detriment. So, um, but unfortunately, yeah. You're right. This has gone on too, too long. long. He needs to comply. He doesn't appear that he's going to. And he's not alone. There's junk cars. You can go right down this alley and you'll find two or three. We need to take all these people to task because they're all ignoring us. They just think that we'll go away. Well, we need to stop them now. So if it means taking all of them to Commonwealth Court, then do it. Because I'm sick of coming of, of seeing these things too. I'm so, I'm sorry to be the the angry man here tonight, but but enough is enough. We need to clean up the town, and, and if they're not going to comply and they're and they're going to ignore us like they have been, then let's take the, the plunge and go for the yeah. The one, the one thing I would say is that the people that are new on the the rotation of things, they'd be given the same fair chance that everybody else was. Um, but again, if you have a situation like the property that shall not be named, then the, the, the right. process of enforcement is the process of enforcement. It's not given any special favoritism or treatment to anybody yeah. else. It is what it is. But I think we need to tell Kraft, that, you know, in addition to that property, all these others that he's told, you have to get that car out of here or cover it. And they just ignore us. Yeah. And then, like, for example, most, them, most of the point. stuff. That, yeah, most people do. Like every once in a while, a letter goes out that being too long. Maybe somebody have a car that's uncovered, or like it would go in your yard. That doesn't. most people they get the letter and they go, ah, crap. And yeah, then they come right. It's, it's easy. But there's about a dozen or so that just ignore us consistently. They don't do anything about it. And I would think after we tell somebody three times, and we eventually take them before the district justice, and then they still ignore us. Yeah. It's time. Yeah, again, I, I don't have a problem with going the, the next stage route because you're right. This has been a problem. I'm, I'm going to date myself here, but probably almost as long as I've been alive yeah. for that particular property. Um, so and I did yeah. buy it on the way here tonight, and it's worse than it was yep, before, before it was inspected a month ago. Yeah. Or six weeks ago. Yeah. So. Can we move on to the. We, we can. Please. Thank you, Sue. Are we um, finished with number four? I yeah. think so. We're just we're going to try to get the draft ordinance in place as quickly as possible. That way, anybody that is under the auspices of having to get it uh, inspected this year can hopefully get that in during the last quarter of the year under the new rules. Okay. Uh, next is the Manget Tank Holding Agreement in escrow. Uh, Fallen has created a draft holding tank uh, release agreement. He suggested that we de deduct his bill from the total escrow amount, which I think is is prudent. Um, but we release the, uh, we dissolve the agreement and release the escrow based on, on used funds. Uh, do you need me to motion for that? Okay. I'll make a motion to, uh, 
uh, move forward or I'll authorize? Authorize the execution of that okay. contingent upon the bank that's doing the same. Okay, so I'll authorize the contingent uh, for the draft, uh, the holding tank release agreement uh, pursuant of the deduction of the uh, costs and expenses from the total escrow amount. For Mangan, for Mangan, Mangan holding, holding tank, holding tank agreement. Second. Jim, second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Now, another one of the big agenda items, the Eagle disposal issues. So we are not alone in this. We have had Eagle have routine problems with picking up on time, not picking things up, uh, dropping things or making a mess when they're collecting. And we are not alone in this. This is a, a big problem experienced by a lot of other municipalities to the point that there was a special WGAL about it. Um, Apparently it's not only evil. Well, uh, yeah. So one of the things that I, I do want to highlight, because I've, I've seen this firsthand, is typically within the past couple of years, they have not missed pickups on weeks. It's they few, have. I mean, few and far between. Not many. But yeah. Many. They do get them. They're delayed. They have started apparently robocalling for some people. Except they robocall some people. But not others. Other yeah, which, which is both a good thing and a bad thing because they, they weren't robocalling anybody before. Um, but the one thing that I do want to highlight, because the contract I think comes up in March, I was going to say, I want to say it's April or, or March. Um, when we put this out to bid last time, because we typically do RFPs for that sort of thing, even if there's a renewal on the contract, Eagle was about half as much as the next crash hauling service. And you're always going to have problems with municipal services, whether it's waste management or you name it. Is, the, to put it bluntly, the devil we don't know better than the devil we know, especially if it's potentially twice as much money. So Colin is looking at the contract to see what we have in the contract that would be pursuant for us to, to go after in terms of Fail, uh, failures to deliver, damages, et cetera. But one of the things that we got to keep in our head is when we put this out to RFP, brace yourselves because it is probably oh, going to be double. ludicrously probably expensive. Yeah. But so did McDonald's and so did the grocery stores. Right? Well, yeah, but I mean, uh, even so, you, you're putting that much more squeeze on people because everything's getting more expensive. I, I asked you both of that um, a text this week. Why do we have, why is this a, a, a municipal situation a lot of townships you just get it's, your own trash it's home. the ordinance that's the well, ordinance that's yeah, but why do we have an ordinance for that when most townships that i'm aware of you can pick up, somebody can pick up your trash you just call them right and that's what we had talked about the workshop mm -hmm. could we switch things so that we have a group of callers that um so basically uh, yeah. some municipalities i looked at different websites um they have a list of registered trash yes. callers just like yeah. septic pumpers yeah. and then the residents can choose from that however um there is some stipulations with recycling if we per because we participate in our recycling grant there's there's requirements i don't know what they are but yeah so we, we'd out. have to do a little bit of looking but the other problem is the the ordinance we have right now aside from requiring the single hauler requires that everybody has trash removal service if everybody is allowed to go kind of all apart, somebody has to keep track of what properties have trash service and what properties don't in order to make sure that we have people that are actually having trash collected and they're not just dumping in the hole in their yard or burning. burning, burning. Um, I saw a hand in the audience. Dave, do you want to come up and say something? Dave Stobby, 17 Forge Road. Uh, Jim, to answer your question, the trash was enacted before I came as supervisor, uh, Tony Brubaker and Harold Secklin were on. They were going back to about 2006. We had numerous trash companies. People would get their, if they chose to have their trash collected. Um, and there was a trash problem with people dumping trash down Smaltz Road uh, at the uh, property where Susan Stum used to live at. Uh, there was an issue. And it was decided by the board with opposition from some in the community that we go with one hauler and they could give us a better price because they were guaranteed a, a volume rate. Uh, I know my neighbor, Matt Barnhart, at the time was paying over $100 a quarter. 
and with that rate, it was substantially less. Trash dumping, illegal dumping seemed to subside. And it was also determined to keep one truck in the whole area instead of having numerous trucks come through the area, which, believe it or not, is actually a benefit to your roads. You, you may not be aware of this, but uh, PennDOT specs determine that one truck going over a road is the equivalent of 7,500 cars traveling on that road. So that's sort of the history as to why they did this. Now, let me address the issue of missed pickups because I'm in the transportation industry. This is a labor issue and I've seen it at my customers. I've seen it where I work. We can't get help. Some of the help you get is not qualified. They're short on drivers. I know um, Susan inquired about me doing part-time work for Eagle and they were thrilled if I would come down and drive trash truck in my retirement, which is impending. <laughs> uh, but there's a labor issue and I am concerned, as Peter mentioned, uh, there are other trash haulers and they are exponentially more expensive. I realize it might be an inconvenience not having your trash picked up, However, at what cost do you actually want to have your trash picked up on that day and maybe not let them slide because of a labor issue? Are you willing as a community, and this is based on everyone needs to hear this, not just the supervisors, are you willing to pay a higher rate? Uh, so I think, I hope I've adequately clarified some of your questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dave. That does um, make a difference. The, yeah. Just to clarify, Marion Township is not the only township that has problems. We here in Stonecroft Village deal with issues with trash haulers. Yeah. They're short help. Yeah. They can't fill all their trucks with drivers. They're not going to come and pick your trash up that day. And you guys do have deferred a to the next day. You have a different hauler than Eagle. Too. We do. Yeah. We have an expensive hauler. Yeah. Our right. bills are four thousand dollars a month for trash pickup. But that's but that's for the whole. That's for the right? whole community. Yeah, that's two hundred and sixty. Yeah. We pay by the pound, but the fact yeah, it's is, that says what? Two hundred bucks. Good. Yeah, two hundred times two hundred is four thousand. Yeah. It's yeah. getting to be a business that's not profitable anymore. Yeah. And nobody wants to do it. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Well, and, yeah, Dan, you're right. I think what's happening with us, though, is because we had this lower rate, we did get a bargain, this, this contract. But since they're low on drivers, where do you think they're going to go pick up trash that day? They're going to the places that they're charging more to and saying, I mean, well, possibly, we're not making any money at Marion, so I, we're not going to go there. I might have I might agree with that, except that it, it has been across the board, like to the point that there was a like I said, a WGAL expose on it. And yeah. like Dan said, it's and Dave said, it's everywhere. It's not just the trash collection. It's the people that are running freight or delivering potato chips to places or driving buses in, in the city. Everywhere has a shortage of labor right now. So even if we went with another company and it's let's say $200 a quarter, we might have the exact same issue that we're having with Eagle right now. The only benefit that we have right now is we still have within the contract another year that we can renew under the existing rate. No, we don't. We don't? No, we don't. Crap. This is, okay, no, this is the last year. Yeah. This is the Okay, last year. Then, then we're bumped. Um, we need to put we're it out to RSP and figure it out. Yeah. We're going to get nailed. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. I thought we had one year left on that. No, because you extended it two years. Oh, crap. I thought, last I thought, we had, year. thought we had three on yeah. that. Damn. It's, it's three okay. and one the, the, the legal issue he has under the contract, section 2.6, I think it was, they're supposed to notify us the first time that they delayed. Well, it was like they didn't provide is, us with notification. Is the, is the contract, when it when it says notification, are they notifying everybody or are they notifying it says the township? To not, I believe it says to notify the township. Right? I was okay. getting and emails from not, people saying, not hey, I got this text. And then like, what? <laughs> but we attempted to do some emails. Okay. Yes, that, was, that was part one. Me. Yeah. After, after that, we started getting notifications. It's kind of like providing statements. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
So we are going to have to do some, some thinking on that. We're going to have to put it out to bid. We were just going to put it out for a proposal anyway. And but we'll probably start that process in like, January. Yeah, it'll probably be like December, honestly. Yeah. 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 Um, but we do that every time there's a renewal for any of the other professional services too. But I, I think we're, we're, we're going to need a brace for impact on that because I know the cost of everything has gone up. Trash is going to be no exception, especially because a lot of the things that would normally uh, recoup the money from like recycling programs don't anymore. Namely, China isn't buying a lot of the materials that they used to, so there's there's really no financial. I mean, they don't want financial to recycling anymore. anymore. Yeah, That's part of the problem. So, yeah, we are we're going to need to address that, and just to to kind of slide easily into the next agenda item, that might be a good item to put in the newsletter when we send the newsletter out. Um, so Irene had suggested that we create a draft of the newsletter to send to residents send it out physically, put it on the website. I think that's a great idea. We have more than enough content to put in there. Um, I think the hardest part is going to be thinning it down so that it is uh, not war and peace when we send it out. But uh, I think it's a good idea that we maybe do that. Like, I guess it'd be like semi-annually every six months. Yeah. I don't want to say quarterly or yeah. a year. Every, once a year may not be enough, but we should we should build that out and start having that be a thing, and then we'll build that into the budget for next year. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, but we're going to need to cut it out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. We need to, we need to cut it down. I, <laughs> ideally, one page front and back is the sweet spot for a mailer. Anything more than that and people stop reading it. So uh, next is the robocalling. This is something else that we want to augment uh, our communication strategy with. Um, I'll be honest. I did not get a chance to dig through the quotes for these folks. Um, I know CMS has given us a quote and uh, Onsolve or Onsolve code red has given us a quote. Um, I wanna look at what's actually in there and covered because I, I dealt with a similar service at work where you had the base price and then you had to pay for uh, certain numbers of text messages or quantity of time for if you were leaving a voicemail. So I wanna make sure that we're not walking faced forward into something that we think is a fixed cost only to have it balloon when we actually start using it. And that's, so. that's also part of the other item. When we sent our newsletter, our concept was to send people a card, whether they want to receive text or email. Or email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so everyone can fill out a card, send it back to us, and, and we would have to get the, everything yeah. we could send it out to print. So that, that is a good point to highlight. because With we, the self-addressed envelope, too. So yeah. that was going to be part of the robot concept. Mm -hmm. Oh, newsletter without without that information, a robocalling right. system right. is useless. Oh. Yeah, we need right. we need the we information, need otherwise right. we can't use it. Yeah, yeah. let's say simple thing: yeah. snow emergency. It's yeah. going to snow. We can notify everybody that has a main street. Address. Right. So. And we have, you know, we have yep. situations where people can't use it. I agree. Yeah. So I'll I'll dig into that, but like I said, I want to make sure that we're not entering into a contractual agreement that's going to ultimately not be a good fit. Um, moving on to the next item, item number nine. I know, Dan, you had some, some items on this. This is the Stonecroft Village deed for Old Space uh, 215. Uh, okay, you're take, handing stuff out, as we'll say. If it's digital, yeah, yeah. otherwise, I'm just going to hold it up, bang yeah. white it. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you. I was here for the Saturday morning workshop, and my question was not able to be answered. Uh, in front of you, you have a map in yellow, which signifies all the open spaced areas called Lot 215 in Stonecroft Village. And uh, our residents' question is, why does the township feel that they need this property deeded to them? Oh. No, the only thing was out along yep. areas nine and two, and maybe a portion of three, to the, the only area. line of William Penn Way was mistakenly dedicated to the homeowners association. Yeah. 
I don't it, think the homeowners association wants any portion of William Penn Boulevard or the right of way for that. Yeah. So that's where there's the need for a corrective deed to pull the right of way out of that. The HOA will retain the actual open space lots. Yeah, this is not not for all of lot 215, Dan. It's this is just, just the right of way along the road. Okay. Yeah. I, which I, I okay. Very clear. Okay. So now it's going to be deeded to Marion Township. Who's going to maintain it? Just the right. Just right. right. Yes. That's it. It's just the strip along the road, just like we do the mowing for everywhere else. It's the, the right of way. It's the like five or so feet off the off the side of the cabin. But the property owner still maintains. The property owner yes. still maintains their frontage as required under the property maintenance code. The township does not go out and mow right of ways or yard areas that are within. But specifically right on like lots nine, two, and three, where there's no no property owner there, that would be no different than any other roadway that we own. Correct, but the, the HOA owns the land in behind the okay. curb and behind the outside speed. of the right of way, but a portion of the right of way includes the sidewalk. But what I was under the impression that Pennsylvania state law says any municipality owns 15 feet of right of way on any person's property. No, the 1933 Road Act created 33 feet total width right away, or 16 and a half feet from the center line along every road. Right. However, those standards can vary. But the 33 is the minimum. Here in this case, I believe it was 30 feet from center line or 25 feet from center line for the 50 foot total width. Which would put you <laughs> right inside some people's houses. No, no. <laughs> Oh, it's again center, or center, or center, or yeah. center of the road down. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, you, you, you take river. that many feet from. No. Well, uh, a lane, the standard lane width is 10 feet, right? 12 feet. 12 feet. Ideal, yeah. And there it might actually be a little wider to the curb. I, I can assure you nobody's home or any of the well, lots are within that right. It was an error. Was this in the plots and plans of the original development yeah. that you were going to? Correct. Have it deeded to the township? No, it was a mistake by the developer's surveyor that he included the right-of-way area in the deed for those open space lots abutting William Penn Boulevard. The solicitor has been trying to get that corrected by having a, was it deed of? Corrected. Corrected deed. Corrected deed. Corrected deed. Um, no. Prepared and re-reported. However, we can work with the HOA if You'd rather just deed that to us. We don't have to work with the developer. I haven't heard back from council despite repeated attempts. Honestly, so if the homeowners association would just like to deed that land to us, you'd we'd be need, happy you to go that to route too. It might be faster. We well, we, we would need a survey of <laughs> yeah, it belongs to the HOA right now. What's that? It belongs to the HOA. Correct. That was a mistake though. But for the road right away portion. Well, open space lots, yes, that's definitely the HOA. Yeah. But not the road right away for Women's well, Penn Boulevard. I mean, you know, if you're going to do something there, you're going to do it there anyway. So why do you need it deeded to you? Well, I think for us Again, to legally. It's mistakenly <laughs> taken from the township and put into that deed. It was a mistake. The township still needs to maintain the road right away for all the public roads. Yeah, I think it's to the, to the extent that there's confusion in the chain of title or the tax map, the township would assert its right to that land because it was incorrectly needed to the HOA. Only the right away area, none of the open space. No, I understand that, okay. but there are there's sidewalk that we maintain. Correct. There's grass that yep. we cut and maintain. Yep. That's, yeah. that's par for the course. But there's a right of way that comes over top of that. Well, I, again, but it's it's a given right of way. You don't need a deed transfer to do that. There's a number of different ways to convey right of ways. One can be a fee simple deed. One can be a true right of way, which is basically the right to use the land. <laughs> Take it you want it. I mean, the state does that's, it all the time. They decide to put a road in, they'll go right down through the middle of your yard. Well, that's, that's there's nothing you can do about it. That's a different process. 
Yeah. By, I, by we're just is. not understanding why it has to be deeded to the township. That's the part for, 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 for purposes of really for purposes of power fine can't title it. Like I said, we have we have a we have an equitable interest in that right of way. In other words, we have the right to possess and use it for right of way, but it's really just needs to be deeded to correct the chain of title so that when someone looks at the recorder of deeds office for this land, they understand that it is not owned by the HOA, but the township. It's yeah. just for purposes of clarifying the chain of title and the, the, the public record with respect to that specific little area of land. Yeah, it, it's a paper exercise to make sure that it looks right. Yeah. Property laws, right, yeah. Congressman? I'll uh, run it by the HOA and see what they have to say, whether they want to. And, and the, the township would fund the cost of this, I would prefer the deed to the extent of survey of that area well, is required. I, I'd actually like to go one step further. Like we obviously would front the cost, but let's build landmark for it because it's yeah. a mistake they made. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I could reach out to the surveyor and see what's going on or get the information, you know, for the description and the exhibit that was used to record the deed to see if you can, you know. There was a mistake made by that. It was and done behind it, our back. I flagged yeah. it and somehow <laughs> just kept on going. It, it got done out. behind our it's back. It's That's it's what happened. Then yeah, send the bill. Yeah, get it, get it done. Yeah. Send the bill. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah. This was our right away. They had no they had ability, ability to, to convey it. Yeah. Right. But did anyway. So someone looking at the chain of title may get the improper impression that the HOA owns it when it, when it does not. Yeah. That's that's why we need to that, that's and, and we understand yeah. that. It's just, you know, we were quite upset that landmark went and done this. It's all behind our back with, with no notification to the township or to the Stonecroft Village HOA. Yeah. And, and they did not dedicate, as I understand, either open space... I know it's all lot 215, which makes me crazy, but then we'll identify um, open space, space seven, seven is not seven is three, three is dedicated. not right because they still have things to the door system is not the roads are not you know, there's a number of things in there that are not dedicated to the HOA yet. We maintain it, we pay for it. But you have the majority ownership now, correct? Or majority we're members, we're yeah. full. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Okay. We don't have anything else to mention on that. Um, I would say we're going to skip over the EMC report since there's nothing new to report. Uh, John is still working on getting the uh, the suggested um, burning ordinance from the PA yeah, Municipal yeah. League. Um, next up is the Creekview Dairy Operation. This is 952 419. Uh, Engineer Hess is waiting for the as-built plans to review until we have those. I, I actually have the oh, as-built plans. Excellent. And I'm, I'm about, I thought I was going to get it done today, uh, issue a review letter for that. So that'll happen. Okay, fantastic. I look forward to reading so we're it. We're working towards getting that project closed out, including the uh, NPDES permit. Very good. The Conservation District has uh, their review letter and comments out regarding that matter. Okay. Excellent. Uh, next item on the agenda is the culverts and related site improvements. Uh, the engineer, myself, and Butch met with uh, Construction Master Services uh, for the pre-construction meeting. Um, unless I'm mistaken, they've already started work on some of the remaining construction. Yeah, they, they started yesterday. I, I, I know when we had our pre-construction meeting, I thought they were going to confirm that. But nonetheless, they started yesterday. And um, I know Butch has been out probably yesterday and today. Um, and things are progressing, I assume, as needed. Butch and I talked about any any infection assistance he may want, and at this point, we're we're proceeding with an on call basis. We'll call okay. me when he feels needed, or something he's not comfortable with, or what have you, or any problems they may have encountered. Okay. They, their their swear was odd today. And they started digging now, uh, you know, with with the right plans. They had the wrong plans to 
the star is connected to that. So we have the right line is not straight on the side, and it's hard to uh, only work uh, for 10 hour days. So you don't work on a Friday. Four ten. Just to notify. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, they said they they do work Fridays, but then they 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 go overtime. Mm. Oh uh, uh, He said. On the morning, they're going to be there from the end, and they work to four. Uh, I don't see that they take a half an hour or whatever off for lunch after the week on the run. <laughs> yeah, based on the. We get the order again, it's really try to ask something more. Some water to start packing up from weather. Some's coming from both ends, and uh, there's no way. Well, even when when uh, the township was doing, I could really, we had, we had two extra pumps in. Uh, so the proper little, dams can leak. Yeah. So then you have to pump out inside the excavated area. Yeah. In addition to the bypass. So the, uh, I guess on Monday morning they'll bring two extra. Little pumps along, yeah, and because uh, oh, they won't be there tomorrow, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, um, and uh, they're figuring they're figuring uh, two, two and a half weeks per culvert. And uh, and I talked to the other farmers today, the other two culverts that we're gonna do, they're gonna take the fence away for us, and and I. I gave him an intentive date, but you know how those go. <laughs> yeah. All things considered, um, if they track to their schedule, we should be done before end of October. Butch, since we're on that topic, I, today I received uh, the detour plan by the copy here for you. Uh, this is the detour plan goes for each of the three projects. I, um, I, I didn't see any particular problems or concerns with the detour plans. And the signage that they're proposing, but uh, again, there's copies here. If anybody or you have an issue with it, we can make adjustments they're, if you feel using, necessary. Yes. Yep. Yep. I'll let you know if I get calls. <laughs> we had to redo these plans. No, no, no. Okay. Next item. Same. Absolutely, please. Back 520 School Road. The detour deal. Um, you guys need to communicate with Rarsburg's fire company. There was an accident on 419 one night, and Rarsburg was diverting everybody on Host Road. Tractor trailer didn't realize that you couldn't because you had detour signs, but they're not up at Host Road. And the tractor trailer guy went down into Marion where he's working on this bridge. That poor guy, I stood there at midnight, me and my grandson with flashlights. So this guy could back up and he had to back up all the way to Rikert Road. So when you guys do these detours, you need to make sure all the fire companies know that if there's an accident on 419 or 422, wherever your detours are, mm. make sure these guys are aware of it because they were sent tractor trailers and you can. We'll, we'll check with CMS. One of the things okay. that they that they have to do and they should have already and, done. And I verified that this yeah. morning when I found out they started. They contact emergency services. I felt yeah. bad for that guy. He was from Georgia. Yeah. And he, like what road was this on? He well, on? he came off 419 and came up Post Road and went down Marion Drive because nobody okay. was up there telling him don't go down Marion Drive because there was a detour. Yeah. So the signage wouldn't have been up. Not last, at the end not, of Marion Drive. Last week. See the but Marion, I assume it's up today. So yeah. the signs have just been installed today. But it's down for mm -hmm. And so the hop is, yeah, right there it ends. 
So that's probably why no signs were up at uh, the other end. But yeah. when the yeah. fire company got this was two three weeks ago this yeah. happened. And that, that's probably why. Yeah. Yeah. We hadn't we hadn't. That started... guy was a nervous wreck. He yeah. was. So and I said, why? Well, I, I went home and got flashlights, and then we went down and helped him back over to Riker Road and turn around. But yeah, so the the road was still limited capacity at that point. We hadn't done a full detour yet. Um, so there there are better signs there now yeah, because of the, yes, the work. You just did that like, a couple a couple of days ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is CMS when they start this project, one of the things that they have to do is they have to notify emergency services. They have to notify school districts, uh, EMS. All that stuff just so that that sort of thing does not happen when we have a culvert or a bridge completely taken out so hopefully you won't see that again if you do call the office let, let us know let butch or me or chuck or somebody will go out and we'll look at it and we'll tell them to move signs if they need to move signs thank you for letting us know okay uh next the construction easements have you had any luck? yes i have had some luck um so I've been working kind of in order of the projects. So Rikert Road, um, I have uh, one signature there, and the other individual who lives in Vermont, uh, he has the documents, but he was going on vacation. Um, and then for Marion Drive North, uh, that same individual who lives uh, out of state, he has that document. And but I need to uh, get contact information for Manbeck, so maybe we could help. <laughs> Which man back? No, Butch. Butch knows James. Yeah. Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And Oscar lives out. Yes. Connie, do you have Oscar's phone number? Yeah. Maybe maybe we can catch up later. Yeah. I would appreciate that. Thank you. So yeah, we're 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 moving along. Yeah. And and I I figured I'd bring them to the board collectively yeah. for execution by the board um, and then they'll get turned over to, to the solicitor and he'll have them reported. Okay. I was just curious if you had any luck so far. We're getting there. Good. Both. Yes. 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 Okay. Moving into the next item, the Bollinger Road uh, overfill matter. Uh, Jason Rickards from DCCD was pleased with the efforts of both <coughs> Marion and Jackson Township to restore the property. The restoration plan submission deadline is August 6th. Do we have any concerns about not being able to um, meet that, Chuck? I don't have any concerns, but I do have concerns. <laughs> Reason being, um, the conservation district would normally require this, the permit that they're asking for to be in the name of and signed by the property owner. Okay. But they will accept the permit in the name of the township, which is the way I believe it should be, if I have the signed copy of the agreement with the property owner regarding the foot. Okay. So I'm a little bit in a chicken and an egg situation here. Sure. I will let you know that the property owner does have an attorney that's representing him now. And uh, I did just talk to him yesterday and sent some more information today. Uh, he tells me, although he's very busy, that he wants to work uh, quickly to settlement of the matter. Okay. So, do we want to maybe preemptively reach out to Jason Rickards, let him know what the situation and is? And that's where I can go because I can ask for an extension, and we'll be okay. Yeah, I, I think the extension is our best bet. Yeah, <laughs> that is settled because I agree. The best way to do that permit is in the municipality. Yes. 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 So, so I will uh, see that that happens. I mean, we have been working in advance to get the documentation ready, but if I don't have authorization to for signatures on the permits, that makes it cumbersome to submit it. Okay. That actually addresses the next item, which was the, the agreement. We're still waiting on the agreement. Thank you for your efforts on mm -hmm. the check. Um, next item is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, Engineer Hess is working on contacting the property owners about uh, the needed uh, yeah. easements and releases. I, I don't know how that verbiage got in there about the property. You said owners. it. <laughs> you said it. Do you not want to do that? I don't remember like, that. we need easements, I, I guess. Um, well, we're, we're, we're within the right of way, but yeah, there would be some potential um, impacts to other property owners. So maybe that was what I was thinking. But um, I, I'm adding, and that is on my list uh, for PennDOT for Charlie Paris. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, 
Mary Drive drainage, the line striping, and now Sheridan Road. So I want to get that on his radar for okay. all three of those projects mm -hmm. on his radar for okay. um, to enable the township to use liquid fuels funds. Okay, so more to come on that. Uh, the next is the line painting. Uh, zones five and six will need to be painted. Uh, I'll be working with uh, the engineer about getting the, the maps cut out for that, but uh, we have the the Excel sheet breakdown of what the roads are. So I took um, from last month's meeting, hmm? I took the roads that you named yeah. and I marked them Oh, out. fantastic. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't get a, a chance to give yeah, them the so cutaway. Just, so, I mean, if you've already given it to them, that's great. I'll still make sure that we have a copy of it. Well, it's actually on that Excel sheet. They're all on there. It's just filtered. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll show you that okay. before I leave. Um, and I do have a master map that breaks it down. It's color coded. I just didn't get a chance okay. to send him the the one that I have saved at home. Um, but uh, I got a place from Butch that I'm going to call. I got that on Monday when I met with him. I um, Burke's Traffic and Rob Bazonia, they're okay. going to send me a quote. Excellent. Thank you. I gave them the linear feet and the whatever feet yep. based on what you said at the last meeting. Yes. Um, okay, perfect. So I'll call this other Tuesday, place. Maybe Friday tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to call the other place on Friday. I, I just, yeah. I, I'll be glad to deal with anywhere that's not a one yeah. at this point. Um, okay, so we'll get moving on that. Uh, the next is the boom mower. Oh, yes, sir. Sure. Okay, thank you. James <laughs> <laughs> James Henry, 37, help you do. First, say it again, I'm sorry. James Henry, 37, yeah. help you do. Thank you. First, I want to apologize to my neighbors for the outburst earlier and some of the board members. I have a question about the line painting. Just for the last few years, how come we paint? You guys have the lines painted. It seems like late fall before the winter comes, and then the oh. salt gets turned on instead it, of waiting until yeah. the, it wasn't. Maybe, it, it wasn't supposed yeah. to be that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a simple well, question. Like, it seems so, like we yeah. guys have nice yeah. rooms all year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's all. That's all I got. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'll, usually I'll you, they're done before school starts. Yeah. yeah. Crosswalks are in some of them. Too. Yeah. So that's uh -huh. usually the goal. Yeah. Is end of summer or yeah. over the summer months before school starts that that. Yeah. The, the it's past, an ongoing question. I don't make it to many of these. Yeah. I work crazy hours. We're not yeah. using that company yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we kept falling and falling. Yeah. Okay. I'll, thank you. I'll give you the 30 second explanation on that. So this year we kind of got uh, a little stymied on some of the other things with getting some of that in place. But last year, the year before that, and the year before that, we actually had the order in with the line painting, painting place as early as February. And we would call them. And they would either not answer or if they didn't answer, they would say like, yeah, yeah, yeah we're going to come out and do it. And it just didn't happen. There was a time, I think it was either last year or the year before, I actually took a day off of work and met with them out here. And they measured off. I actually, they did the crosswalks. Uh, they didn't do, do the crosswalks, but they marked it where they were going to paint. And then they didn't come back out for a month. And we had to start calling them again, going, are you guys coming out? Are you guys coming out? Are you guys coming out? So this year we kind of resolved to, we're just not doing business with that company anymore. We're tired of dealing with it. We're going to find somebody else. That's, what we're doing. That's the delay that we've had this year. Otherwise, there is actually a plan that I drew up about six years ago that breaks the township into six pieces. Um, every, every year, the goal here, barring any emergency things we have to do, is to address the roads, the actual road work, in one of those six slices of the pie. Line painting would be done in a third. So it'd be two out of the six pieces would get lines and we simply start at one side and we rotate around. That way it's on a nice routine pattern of, of maintenance and repair. Uh, but it, again, it costs money. So the line painting, thankfully, is usually a relatively low cost item. And it's usually, relatively. You, relatively, I mean, if you compare that to the culverts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, the, it's usually pretty easy to set up. The, the way we've had this year is we, we're switching companies and we're trying to find a company that'll work. So uh, anyway, uh, with that said, we've got a call out. I'm going to make some calls. If anybody knows of a company that does good work and does line painting, please let, let Sue know. Let we will know. be delighted to talk to them. Um, otherwise, we'll be working to get that done as soon as we possibly can. Goal is always being before school starts. Uh, yes. Yes. Mary Lou Rossman, um, state of uh, Edna Moderna's 412 Water Street. Um, I haven't been in the last couple of meetings due to personal things. Um, with the line painting, uh, I saw in Womelsdorf that they have these little people up where that 
if you see somebody there that they must stop? Oh, the, Isn't that you'll, something the, the we can do? pedestrian crossing thing? Yeah. I've actually got good news for you. Did you go and get those today, Butch? The bottles. We actually, we finally got awesome. them. Awesome. So there are three for Main Street, one at each intersection. And uh, now that they're there, we can have Butch plop them in the intersection as early as tomorrow. Okay. And also while I'm up here, I want to thank all of you for the sympathy card about my son. Our condolences. Thank you. Truly. Okay. The boom mower. This was something that we had talked about last yeah. year when we were doing budget. Uh, Butch actually has found one. This is a, not just a, a, a mower. This is a tractor with a mower attached to it. Um, the, the listed price, and we would definitely need Butch to go and look at it and give it a thorough once over is 54,500, which is actually a really good price yeah. for that size piece of equipment. I think you said it's a hundred horsepower tractor with a, a an arm mower that would uh, be extremely useful for pulling things down. Like if we have the S bridge where we have to trim it, you, uh, the S -bridge we, with that? you could, yeah. Uh, you wouldn't have to get out and use a, a handsaw and, and hedge clippers to do it. So it, it is in the budget. It's a capital expenditure and it's actually under what we had figured the price tag would be. So I'd, I'd like to provisionally authorize the, the expenditure of the 54,500 based on uh, Butch's assessment and inspection of the mower and uh, our either ability or inability to haggle down on the price. Financing? Okay. I mean, we have it in, we can either finance it or we can we can pay for it out of the budget item because we have we have the out, liquid out cash. Out of which budget? Which um, um, it's the um, would it go into liquid fuels? It's, or no, it's it's, it's, it's general. Actually, could we use that? Could we use liquid fuels for that? Because we have it budgeted in the I general do, item. I do not know that. Yeah, I give it ask, but we actually I'm trying to remember if it's highway safety and maintenance. It's the like I can't remember the code of the top of the my head, but there is one that we budgeted yeah. about eighty thousand yeah. dollars in for capital equipment. So we actually have. We have the money sitting there for okay. if we have to buy equipment. Okay. And this is one that we had kind of on our radar as purchasing for being able to do things better, faster, cheaper. Okay. So, second. Um, okay, Jim, Jim has seconded. Motion's on the table. Oh, Peter, motion, Jim, second. Before okay. we take a vote, does the board want to make a motion authorizing the purchase contingent upon which is assessment well, that, that's... With, with, with liquid fuel? Fuels funds, if lawful, or if not, with the general funds. Do we, yes. do we need to stipulate that? Yes. Okay. Well, in that case, yes. Yeah, um, so, so Sue, I'm going to do my best to rewind and, and state the whole thing again. So okay. we'll let the other motion die, even though Jim seconded it. Um, yeah. Just okay. non okay. non vote on that okay. one. Um, I'll I'll speak into your microphone clearly. Please. I will motion to provisionally allow the or approve the. Expenditure of the fifty-four thousand five hundred on the boom mower, contingent upon um, the review of the quality of the, the equipment, the ability to uh, negotiate on the price, as well as uh, subject of the determination by the board for uh, the ability and eligibility to use liquid fuels instead of uh, general funds. I'll second that. Butch beat them up as bad, good as you can. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Yeah, I was going to say, if you want one of us to go along, we can play good, good cop, bad cop. Yeah. Let me know when you're going. <laughs> That's fun. What time do you want me here? Okay, let me know. Should take my wife. She's the negotiator. Yeah, so absolutely. Take your wife then. Uh, next, um, I don't think we need to labor too much on this. This is the building. Um, we need to. If we haven't already made contact with the architect, we need to make contact yes. with the architect. No, no, no. August. August. Okay. August tenth. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can't do any grant requests or submissions really until we have a design. That's kind of the, the entry gate number one. Is we have to know what we're asking for. And just to reiterate to everybody that's watching this or in the audience, this is very much a decision where we have to do something with this building. And we're either looking at a huge sum of money to rehab the building up to a bare minimum, or we have to break ground on something new. And the reality is there are grants available for doing the, the second option, not so much for the first one. And the entirety of doing this project is contingent on getting those grants. We can't just do it 
we have to have a plan and we have to seek grants. Otherwise we have to tread water for the time being as it is. So uh, next item, the Comcast franchise renewal. Um, we emailed the updated list of all the addresses to Phil Fraga. Um, after we received the proposed agreement, the next thing is to have Attorney McFarlane uh, advertise at a public hearing to adopt the Com Comcast franchise agreement renewal, assuming we don't have any challenges to it. I have not heard back from him. He was on vacation. It, it's probably so, going to be. Yeah. It's probably going to be a bit. Um, have a nice night. Uh, next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance. Uh, this is for amending Section 403 about the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, Jim and I attended a meeting back in May, but we have not gotten uh, the next scheduling. Um, based on what we had talked about there, uh, each one of the other members was going to take uh, the items back to their individual boards to discuss because there was a strong interest to participate. And the goal here is to make one uh, ordinance that everybody has rather than having a strange, tangled, uh, confusing Christmas light style writing of a, a, an ordinance in the joint plan. So can hopefully we we'll have contact them to find out why they're in the ordinance too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we could probably send a letter to the secretary or give her a call, but I think it's more they're workshopping amongst themselves. And unfortunately, the wheels of local government don't always spin the fastest, especially when you only meet once a month to talk about things. I know. That. So <laughs> I, I know. Um, so. If we don't hear something soon, we'll reach back out. But I'd imagine probably more towards the end of the year, we'll have something that comes back to us for review as a joint board again. Um, last but not least is the stormwater maintenance ordinance and fees up updates. Uh, this is something that we need to dig into. I apologize for not being able to be at the last workshop, um, but we need to go through this because it is in dire need of yeah. uh, updating and really honestly simplification. It is. A very so confusing. Is it specifically, the stormwater fee yes. schedule. Yes, it is yeah. very cumbersome. Yeah, I don't know how anybody. We're trying. Sue and I are trying yeah. to look at it and and equitably apply the charges. It doesn't even differentiate between the amount. Or the ICS will account cover. It needs some attention to say. It, it, it does, and actually. This has been on my report as item number five for the entirety of this year. I would like to get, um, um, so this is stormwater maintenance ordinance and fee update. I'm, I'm thinking that's really the stormwater ordinance update. Perhaps in a small projects, mm -hmm. self-guided design and application that homeowners could use to streamline the amount of time it takes to interact with people and then the options and encourage them to hire a consultant, it would eliminate all that. So I think it's it's really a worthwhile I completely but I want to get that example to Solicitor here, um, and then also trying to set up a, a program. As you'll see in my report, there were three three inquiries on on, a, on the exemption, two of which or one of which. Didn't even need it, you know, it was under the threshold, so it <clears throat> it was 118 square feet, so that was you're, you're good to go. Um, <clears throat> but two other ones were 900 square feet, and the driveway we talked about at 1750 square feet. Um, so you know, those exemptions, the two of them, I don't know if the individuals, well, one of them I know he's not going to pursue, and the other one I'm not sure of. So in addition to that, then when somebody does make uh, an application, or well, we know that one's coming, so I have six on the list, you know, that, that are pending coming. And so I think having that small projects would really help everyone here in Marion Township and, and take what is a very cumbersome ordinance to understand and interpret that you almost need to have a consultant and we'll give some kind of a cookbook that we 
yeah. you know, feel comfortable that we're addressing stormwater for these little projects. I, I'm all for having something that's self-help oriented, especially when it's something that's that complicated. If yes. we can get it so that most of the stuff will, most of the common stuff I'll say will fall into that easy to use thing and you don't have to go and engage the services or yeah. or something. That's it, the only thing, the one area that just concerns me, and it, and it does for any job, even if an engineer's on board. You know, a lot of these we're not we're not doing any sort of and I'm concerned about a couple things. One, the system, but also the formation of the whole over the time. That's tough because you got to have the elevation where it's been able to dig in a hole, mm -hmm. put the stone in, like, take the stone water. Mm -hmm. You know, usually you do that beforehand um, to know that it's going to work. But the one I have right now, I'm asking you simply. To an exemption that they're still doing storm water, and it's okay. But I'm asking them to, uh, you know, contact the engineer or once they get it excavated, take a look. You know, not a magic bullet that it's going to work, but you know, it's better than nothing and having some idea of the conditions there as the, as the system's installed. Yeah. And if we encounter a problem, then we have to back up a step or two and and evaluate that and. You know, there's there's means to to mitigate if there is a problem. You know, say they hit rocks, say they hit high ground, or mm. whatever the case may be. So, yeah, okay. Very good. that is the last item on the agenda. So we'll move into the supervisors' comments. I have the police report to do. It was a pretty busy month. Uh, three accidents that they responded to. There was traffic citations, twelve traffic stops, and uh, there were uh, seven incidents that they responded to. A uh, total of 819 miles sold over the course of the 60 hours that they they bought. The only other comment I have is uh, I'm still working on the Microsoft licensing. I reviewed the stuff that Microsoft sent. Um, we do fall into the HTTP and the CUI category, so I'm filling out the eligibility on that, and then we can get the licensing in place. Um, I, I know. Yeah. Um, but uh, one of the things that we might want to pursue, depending on how fast they get back to me, is I don't think we're going to get our hands slapped for if we sign up for a, a personal license just in the time being and then transfer it over. Um, the only down, downside of that is I may have to spend some time on the phone with somebody from Microsoft about transferring what would be our domain name. I, I'm okay with waiting. Yeah. I'm okay with waiting just a little bit longer. Yeah. Melissa was kind enough to bring in an older version of Excel and. Okay. Um, so uh, okay. I would just so so I'll whether it's tonight yeah. necessarily or not, or maybe I'll pop in tomorrow yeah. or over the weekend or something. I can get you set up on a web call or like a, a, a free version of Outlook. Yeah, to be able it, to check it, it's just being able to because yeah. so, communication between the three and of course all the valuable information that's in there we just yeah yeah mm -hmm. um the other update i have is um regardless of how whoever set those computers up i don't know how they whatever voodoo they did but um i've got it so she can talk to sue's computer and the server so she's going to okay. start moving stuff over and cataloging it mm -hmm. okay um Oh, it's weird. It's, uh, like it's the weirdest thing. Oh, it's sometimes it's dolphins. I have yeah. never seen that. Work. They're connected, but they're not connected. Yeah. So, so there was voodoo. Oh, yes. Uh, there was some sort of bad, bad mojo in, in the mix. But <laughs> the other good news is the computers that I ordered have arrived. I'm going to be updating them and getting them. I talked to Sue about this, getting them on Windows 11. The end of life support for Windows 10 is either, I think it's end of next year. But if we make the jump now, it doesn't cost us anything. We can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. So I'll get it on Windows 11. I'll get it patched. Um, I'm probably going to do some things to make it a little more user interface familiar in terms of looking like Windows 10 so that it's not as much of a culture shock for them. 
Uh, well, I, it's Windows 11 is vastly different. So it's, it's, I, I don't even like it, but um, I'll get that set up and that will be set up correctly from the ground up. All the networking, all the permissions, all the interaction that we, we need to have for a smooth, seamless operation for you to be able to just have a, have a local chat client between everybody will be there. We won't have any of this weird or backwards uh, configuration. I don't know who did what. It's we're basically putting in the computers. I'm going to hit the reset button on the, the router and I'm going to set it up so that we have a localized network where only the office computers talk to each other and a guest network for anybody that comes in with a phone or a laptop or whatever. So it's going to be simple. It's going to be streamlined and it's not going to have any of that legacy nonsense that's sitting there. So yeah. uh, that's. Couple, we're retiring a couple of laptops. Can you use them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that was the only update that I had um, other than I uh, sat down tonight and I got whatever the, the weird issue was that was preventing uh, Melissa from reaching the server that straightened out so she can start cataloging. So, um, I don't know what its problem was, but I, I turned a bunch of stuff off and it started working, so. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that is, that is the weird configuration that I've never seen yet. But, We'll, we'll we'll be past it soon. So I don't have any additional. Irene, do you have anything? Um, I guess it's just um, whenever I'm sitting, I'm just with my hands open. There's a lot of stuff that we were handed that were not addressed. Maybe they were known about, they're not known about. Um, you know, things like the building falling apart. That's not anyone, anyone could have foreseen, but we know there was periods and long periods of time where there was zero building maintenance because some individuals felt it wasn't necessary. So now we have a building that's physically falling apart. There was a comment in the audience earlier about why you're spending money on the building. Well, because it's falling apart and to band-aid it would be, I think, a poor decision. Yeah. Um, Even a Band-Aid was close right, to 100000 Right, a, a Band-Aid would be a poor decision because there's so much of this that is not usable. It just doesn't work well as a workspace. We know the roads are bad. We know that they need to be fixed. Um, we have the SEO situation. We have the culvert situation. We have the sewer situation. There are, a, we have the garbage situation. There are so many things that are going on. We have all the that, that need to be updated. Yeah, that, that again, as I could, if I could say, speak for this board, um, there's so many things that we're trying to deal with that have been left to us for good or for bad, um, but there's only so much money that we could do things with. And unfortunately, more and more things keep on breaking. And so for those of you that are out there complaining, feel free to run in the next election if you think you could do it better. For those of you that want to analyze the budget and go over it line by line, I'll be happy to sit down with you and explain to you what those bills are for. If you think you can do it better, you're welcome to come up here and have my seat. I can honestly say I am truly and 100% grateful for everyone sitting up here for all the hard work that they do to help us band-aid it together. But I'm really sick and tired of people making negative comments all the time. If you think you could do it better, run for office, come up here and sit it sit here because I thought I could do it better. And you know what? I put my darndest in here. I am here five to 10 hours a week. I receive no pay. There are times I come before I go to my regular job. There's times I come after my regular job. And there's plenty of times I come over here on the weekends. And I am trying to do the best that I can with what I have. And we're all trying to brainstorm and do what we can to do what's best. So I'm sorry if you have a problem if we donated $2,500 to the police department. You don't have a clear understanding of what they're facing. They had increased fuel costs for the last year that they did not anticipate. I like to be able to call 911 and have an officer show up to my house when I need that help. I think that's a wonderful thing. I'm sorry if people disagree with us making a small donation. I think it was $200 to the Wormelsdorf Fire Department. They have come out to our territory numerous times to assist with emergencies in our area, regardless of, of it being Marin. They came out to Marin. I'm starting to have a problem with us donating to our public library, which was about $150. It is the Wilmersdorf Library, but it's in Marion Township as well. 
that we don't provide more. I know what their budget is. Their budget is around one hundred ten to one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, and that's the support of full time staff. They get little to no assistance from the county. That is a, a horrible amount of pay for what those people do in providing another public service to this community and communities around us. And, and again, that's another staple of the community and, and access to, to social services that you can't even fathom. Again, if you think you could do it better, then run for those positions, be on their boards, get active in the community. Don't just sit there and complain. I, 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 I've had it up to here with people complaining about things. We are all trying to do our darndest stuff here. If you think you could do it better, please run for office. Thank you, Erin. Jim, any comment? Earlier we talked about roads. Do mm -hmm. we need to, should we be getting estimates on these roads so that we can seek grants? Yep. Yeah, I mean, we put in, like strategically, we, we have some that we put in for grants, like we had one that we put in for dirt and gravel road. The problem is there's not a uh, abundance of grants. So the no, ones that are available, we, we do tend to target. Um, we had that one that uh, dirt and gravel road was was interested in, but ultimately it didn't didn't land yeah, because they changed the criteria. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the dirt and gravel low volume road program has been getting very very competitive over the years because the municipalities have figured out that it is a funding source and one of the few funding sources that are there year yeah. to year. So you. You know, you have to have a real viable project that, that ticks the boxes for that program, which is drainage problems, erosion problems, things of that nature that we can tie to a road. Well, shared um, road should come under that experience. It's pretty well, the dra drainage problem is pretty specific, but with, with that and said... To, and if it's a paved road, low volume. Well, yeah. it's not, and it's I not. think they, they, they changed up that criteria to some degree to try and eliminate a lot of people. Almost everyone that was done here in, in Marion is a paved road. Mm -hmm. The program is dirt and gravel roads, yeah. and they put in low volume to help if there was a true need somewhere for a paved road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just getting real competitive. Yeah. And I'm not aware of any other real funding sources. So, so, Jim, what we could do, and this is something that when we do the budget, let's build it in, but let's turn the engineer loose and get designs for a lot of these roads. That way we either, we either work on them during that year or if something pops up, we toss it in into the ring for, for funding. Well, and and what what I would say is is done is you know you, you create a five and a ten year plan mm -hmm. and you start listing these roads and, and you know obviously start with the worst one. Yeah. And yeah, to your point, we could come out and even just do a, an assessment of the road with what we think it would take to to repair it. You know, yeah. is it a is it a full reclamation? Is it a full reconstruction? Is it a tar and chip? Is it an overlay? And just depending on what conditions the road is in, we can help guide and uh, offer some and cost yeah. uh, numbers you know, based on the quantities involved with the road, length of the road, width of the road, what have you, and kind of pl start plugging in budget numbers yeah. to see what it's going to take to to get all the roads up to, to spec. And you know, again, a five, ten year plan helps you budget for it, plan for it. You have the numbers then, so if a grant does become available, you, you, you know, you have some backup for it to, to request funding. Yeah. I mean, yeah. school, school road alone, I think is a million dollars when we looked at it because it's like more than a mile. It's, 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 it's way more than a mile. The cost of road work, just yeah. like everything else, is, is falling under inflation. Yeah. It was way cheaper 10 years ago than it is today. Yeah. And, you know, in the past, Marion, I think, has... Kind of push things down the road, and now you're, 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 you're paying the piper. It's it's yeah. that really expensive, you know, yeah. mode. And yeah, I'm sorry I got angry earlier about chair the road, but it no, is it's, approaching. It's okay. It's it is approaching easy. having to close yeah. that it's, road. It's yeah. bad. It's we have limped it along with with cold yeah. patch for a number of years now. But mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. There there will come a breaking point. The problem is that breaking point is going to be. Massively expensive. Yeah, it, we, we, could, we could find out numbers, and that's what yeah. we can do. And then we could we could figure out how to finance it. But right now, I can tell you, um, with the, our current culverts, um, most of our general fund is going to be eaten up with, with um, mm. the drainage pipe. That's cool. another you know big big chunk of change. So everything that we have sitting in that is the ARP the, funds. This is the ARP fund. Yeah. In fact, that so, we so, so basically, we're going to be taking money out of our, our savings account. 
pay bills. And so we, we do have money, we have about I think less than 700,000 in um, combined in uh, liquid fuels. It's nothing, it's not- It doesn't go far. It doesn't go very far, yeah. It seems like a lot, so, but-, but, it's, but it's well, I think since I've been on this board, costs have doubled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I when I first came on this yeah. board, the sewer project was five million. Oh yeah. Now it's ten. Yeah. The cost of roads has yeah. doubled. Yeah. The cost of this building has yeah. doubled. Yep. And if we wait any longer, it's going to double well, again. I would yeah. say identify your top three yeah. roads and right. we'll priority, and we we start assessing right. them yeah. and quantifying what the cost of them be so we can plan or seek funding for right. them. I, I have no problem with that. The one thing I will say as a caveat is. It's, it's one thing to identify. It's a good thing to know. Knowing is half the battle. But this is we might fall into the same trap that we fell into 10 years ago. We may not have mm, the money yeah. to do it. We may not even have the money to pay a note on financing the, the work. Like, it may be way too expensive. I'm um, worried about the work that we have going on now, yeah. not having the funding. That's oh, we'll, what I'm worried about. We'll have the funding in there. Yeah. It, it's it's not... Another year or two? You know, with everything with with Act Five Thirty Seven, I mean, well, that's that's a like, whole that's right. a whole other can of worms. Right. Even it, even it, if we spent nothing on the right. culverts, that that that's right. a yeah. that's a that's a that's a that's a zero out button right there. That's why I keep but, bringing up that bad word. Yeah. That's in right. Yeah, but, 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 I don't think we're going to have any alternatives. Studies. And so people, it costs if we're ever taking the question cost. So I say like from. We consolidate any questions that we have to a meeting in a single email, and it goes out to them rather than these email. Unless, unless there's unless there's it's emergency, emergency. Um, because because it, it costs and it costs and it costs, and it's like the time you know I'm in there and I'm balancing the budget and I'm writing these checks and I'm writing these checks and I'm like oh my god, you know it, 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 you know I, I live here it, it, it's painful to me but it's like it's like man we've just been dealt with bad hand here you know so much stuff is falling apart and, and we're trying there's no more band-aiding right. anymore and and it, there's no money we've there's hit a no point money. we have yeah. to eat we have to eat the elephant yeah we have to figure out which little piece to attack first yeah so um jim any other comments yes thank you chuck any comments uh no i uh, my report i sent out today certainly get yeah, questions tonight or even tomorrow or whenever yeah. just yeah. feel free to reach out Colin. I have nothing to report. Thank you very much. Sue. Nothing. Melissa. Okay. On that note, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 9.06 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.